Hello, language arts class. I've got some exciting news for everybody. Uh, I think the one bright side of being uh, kind of stuck in quarantine for about a month and a half is just playing around with some different technology. And I think I figured out how to do um, like a screenshot with sound on my iPad that I'm using here where I have a digital copy of the Unteachables. So I should just be able to read it. You can just see the screen as I'm reading rather than me trying to film the screen. And that might have resulted in some motion sickness or uh, just some blurriness. So this should just be a lot easier for everybody to follow along um, with the read aloud. So um, where we left off with chapter 15 that Mrs. Cole read, um, at the very end you had Jake Terranova, the character coming in, and Mr. Kermit seeing him for the first time. So chapter 16 is going to be about that encounter. And it's written from the point of view of Parker Elias, which is, um, I think, an odd choice, um, at least on the surface. But we'll see uh, why the author, Gordon Corman, decided to use the Parker Elias character as the point of view for this event. So, chapter 16. Jake Terranova. Everybody knows Jumpin' Jake Terranova, who will jump through hoops to get you a great deal on a new or used vehicle. The billboards are all over town. Although to me, Terra Nova Motors looks more like Aero Mavent Rotors. Anyway, there's no mistaking the face. This guy's famous. What's he doing in room 117? Mr. Kermit has an expression on his face as if he smells something really bad. It's the way he looks when there's a Vuvuzela blaring. And since the Vuvuzelas are all gone, it can only mean one thing. He hates Jake Terranova's guts. Miss Fountain steps forward. I really should explain, Mr. Kermit. I ran into Jake, that is, Mr. Terranova, at my parents' country club. I wanted to see if he remembered me. He sold me my Prius last year. Mr. Terranova smiled with all 32 teeth. Great car. Are you in the market for a new vehicle, Mr. Kermit? Emma loves hers. It makes me feel good to know I'm helping the environment every time I drive, Miss Fountain says with a meaningful look over her shoulder at Ribbit. Our teacher's eyes get so narrow that they're barely slits. Anyway, Miss Fountain goes on, we got to talking and your name came up, Mr. Kermit. I told him about that story in the telegraph. The car dealer cuts her off. This should come from me. He turns to Mr. Kermit. I read the article about the Vuvuzelas. They mentioned something from the past, something I was involved in. Our teacher had his teeth clenched until his lips have practically disappeared. Mr. Terranova used to be one of my students, he explains. His speech clipped some years back. That's not enough. They should hear the whole truth, he addresses us. You might have heard about a cheating scandal. Well... Mr. Kermit had nothing to do with it. It was me. I can't believe the newspaper dredged up that old story. Don't worry about it, Mr. Terranova, I assure him. None of us read newspapers. I do, Mateo puts in. Middle Earth Weekly. Of course, it's more fanfic than news. The car dealer gives him a strange look. The point is, I don't want you kids to think that Mr. Kermit did anything wrong. It was my fault. I got caught, and I got suspended for it. No kidding, Aldo pipes up. We just got back from being suspended. But I didn't think it would happen to a big-shot rich dude. Barnstorm snorts a laugh. He wasn't a big shot when he got suspended, dummy. He was a kid like us. Aldo and Barnstorm wheel around in their seats, turning belligerent expressions on each other. But Mr. Terranova quickly steps between them. Guys, I was in middle school once, too. If you two want to throw hands, there's nothing I can do to stop it. But not here and not now. Aldo and Barnstorm back down. The car dealer faces Mr. Kermit again. So I came here to apologize, which I should have done years ago. And if there's anything I can ever do to help out, you know, with the class, all you have to do is say the word. Thanks for the generous offer, our teacher says stiffly. But that won't be necessary. Of course we want your help, Miss Fountain exclaims, and it's pretty obvious this was her plan all along. 
Mr. Kermit's sour expression gets worse. I'm sure Mr. Terranova wouldn't appreciate it if you and I went to his lot and tried to sell cars, and he would be just as unsuccessful trying to teach our students. Be reasonable, she pleads. He's built a business. He could give a math unit on earnings versus expenses or how to amortize a loan. He could let us tour his repair shop and maybe teach us about basic auto mechanics. He could let me take out a Dodge Viper for a test drive, I add. I have a license. Mr. Terranova doesn't answer. He's beaming at Miss Fountain, and at that moment he looks exactly like his picture on the billboards. Without the flaming hoops, obviously. It's a date, he says, and Miss Fountain's cheeks get all red, even though it isn't really hot in the classroom. Well, maybe, Mr. Kermit concedes, if the curriculum allows. We don't have a curriculum, Mateo points out. We just get worksheets while you do crossword puzzles. That costs him a puffy tail.